Hey everybody, welcome back to the Montana Garage. It is a Tuesday afternoon. I just got home from work and I had some parts show up yesterday for the uh, front suspension. The rest of the stuff showed up. So I'm going to show you what that is and then hopefully we'll get started putting that thing together. All right, here's all my boxes. Uh, I ordered the stuff from CPP. And uh, before I show you what I got, I'm going to tell you that I actually did all this yesterday. I showed you everything that was in the boxes, talked about why I got what I got. And I also did some work on the transmission, and I talked about what's in that box. And then uh, my SD card uh, screwed up again. So I'm asking you other YouTube guys out there, is it my SD card or is it my GoPro itself? Like, uh, I was recording away, and then I got to a point where I went to use the GoPro, and it said SD error, you have to reformat to fix it. But if you reformat, you lose everything, which is silly because everything's gone anyways. Before I reformatted it, I couldn't access anything. So everything that I had not already downloaded that was on my SD card, gone. So I don't know if I need to get a new SD card. It seems like it's been happening a lot lately. It happened once or twice when I first started this deal. And uh, it's happening more and more. I'm losing more and more stuff all the time. So hopefully uh, this won't just disappear. All right, so this is unboxing... Uh, take two because I lost the first one. One, two, three, four, five. I got six different boxes here that I want to show you guys uh, real quick and just let you know what I got. Um, so it's the front suspension. Originally, I kind of planned on just putting new bushings in the original air arms, but I had enough people tell me that uh, they recommended going with like a tubular air arm that corrects the caster, I think it says. This control arm are built to provide five degrees of caster. Anyways, I guess that helps them drive better. I don't know. Anyways, I got talked into spending the money and we got CPP tubular the lowers. These are the uppers and CPP has a couple different um, price points on these. These are the more expensive ones that supposedly have decent ball joints in them. I don't know that they're moved or American made, but I think that's why these are a little more expensive. They got a little higher quality ball joints. So. Uh, tubular upper and lower control arms and these boxes over here take some room uh, we have the disc brake conversion you got rotors on two inch drop spindles drilled and slotted rotors they're all they all come fully assembled the only issue I had with this thing is if you can see in here this I've got a rag on this and then that's just the end of the bearing uh, area or whatever and they didn't have this packaged very well you can see how that had just poked through a hole in there and then there was a bunch of this styrofoam packing stuff got down in the into the bearing cavity or whatnot. So it doesn't look like anything's really damaged. I tore through there and picked it all out. So just, uh, I had, you know, obviously two of them, two different boxes. This one had styrofoam top and bottom. But for some reason, this one, they only put the styrofoam stuff on the bottom and then the thing was just rolling around in there and you can see where it put a hole in the box. So uh, not too stoked about how they packaged that, but in the end, I, I don't think it's damaged. So we'll make it work. So tubular control arm, disc brake uh, conversion with uh, drop springs, and then I decided to go with the Viking coilovers, coilover shocks. So that's what's in this box with some other little stuff. I was going to just use, you know, regular coil springs, but then I wasn't sure if I wanted the drop ones. Once I did the two inch lowering. Uh, Drop spindles, I wasn't sure if I wanted stock springs or lowering springs, and I didn't want to change them five times, take them out and cut them and put them back in and buy new ones and blah, blah, blah. So I spent the money and just got some uh, adjustable coilovers so we can play with the right height a little bit. So hopefully that's gonna work out good. And the last thing I have here, and this was a, this was a bit of a surprise. I didn't order this, it just showed up. Uh, a friend of mine, a lifelong friend of mine who also is into Tri-5 Chevys ordered this for me because he just put it in his car. So it's flatline barriers where heat and sound meet their maker. So it's like Dynamat or Killmat. It's a uh, heat and insulation. 
product. And uh, you know, the cool thing about this is it comes, it's like pre-cut. You got all these little pieces and a little map of where they go. And this just covers the floor. I don't know if this company has stuff for the doors and the lid and stuff too. But anyways, uh, my buddy put this in his 55. He was super stoked with it. And uh, yeah, he thought he would uh, share the love and send some to me. So thanks a lot, Brian. Obviously, somewhere down the road, we'll have an installation video of that stuff. Not real soon, probably. All right, so I suppose the first thing I need to do is just kind of readjust uh, my frame here. Give me some room. I'll kind of center it. Guess I can probably scoot the 55 body over a little bit too. Give myself some room. And then we will uh, start trying to put this stuff together. It doesn't look like there's really much for installation instructions. Uh, but it seems pretty straightforward. And hopefully... A guy of my uh, limited intelligence will be able to figure it out. So let me set the camera up, we'll move stuff around and get rolling. Made a little room, screw that over, move that over. Did you guys see how I moved the frame with the jack back here and then... This has been pretty handy, I just threw the front of it, front cross member on my little creeper. And uh, you know, she goes wherever you want her to go. That's about to end, I guess, but uh, let's grab some jack stands, get this bad boy up in the air, and we'll uh, see if we can figure out how to put this stuff together. One thing I know I gotta do is, when I painted this, I meant to tape these threads off and I forgot to, so I was like, well, I'll just run a tap down them. Of course, I have a pretty good assortment of tap, well, die, I guess, taps and dies, but uh, I don't have this one. So what I did over here is I just took the old wire wheel and wire wheeled the threads. So that seems like that's working. So we'll break out the drill and take care of those other three. So those should be all cleaned up good enough. Move on to whatever's next. So let's get started. Uh, there is not absolutely zero instructions, but the instructions are pretty basic. So uh, remove original lower control arms, install new lower control arms. Tells you the long tube with the sway bar goes towards the front, install the springs. Install the shocks and have the car aligned. So that's the instructions in a nutshell, which I mean, it's pretty basic stuff. So uh, I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the lower first and then I'll put the upper on. And then I think means they're uh, adjustable coils, coil over shocks. Uh, I shouldn't, I don't need any kind of spring compressor or nothing. I can just throw it in there and sandwich it together. I believe, I guess we're about to find out. All right, so I got the first one. Uh, out of the package, it does tell you that the tab goes to the front. Uh, the doesn't tell you this, but the ball joints be facing down. So let's see how she lines up. Turn this a little bit. There we go. Yeah, holes look like they're kind of in the right spot. Let's grab some hardware and see what happens. The lock washer is going to need one more nut. All right, so I'm going to assume we're going to go flat washer and bolt going down. And of course, the bolts will go through that one. Go through that one. Don't go through that one. Don't go through that one. So we gotta grab the uni bit or whatever it's called and make our holes just a teeny smidgy bigger. Okay. 
Alright, so washers fit on the front two and they don't fit back here because the holes are too close to the firewall or not the firewall, the cross member. I'm pretty sure uh, when I took these apart that the bolts were going down like that. I guess there's an obvious way to verify. It's dark under here. But yeah, bolts are going down. Feels like there's some sort of washer on those ones. Bolts are low. Out of control with the camera. Too dark in here to see anything. Bolts are going down and yeah, they have a washer on the top, a lock washer on the bottom. Let's see what the original hardware looks like. It's in the bag. I'm gonna assume these were the bolts. And it looks like we had a lock washer, but they did not have a washer on them. So I'll put the washers that fit on and I guess I'll leave the washers that don't fit off. Because I like to do the things the hard way whenever possible, I'm going to go ahead and grind the washers flat a little bit so they'll fit. Sure, it doesn't really matter, but I guess if it just takes a second to do that, and then she goes in there. Might as well, I guess. Probably should uh, have my safety glasses back on with them sparks flying up in my face. All right, now for whatever it's worth, we got a washer on all of them. Let's see if the old control arm will go up on the bolts now. All right, so, the bolts sticking down where they're supposed to, hopefully. It's one of those things you need a couple extra hands for. Get them all kind of lined up and whatnot. Good. Did a great job of putting the nuts where I couldn't reach them. Perfect. Started to hold her in place. If I can get this other one back in the hole. All right, let's try to get these tightened up. For some reason, I don't really understand it, but the uh, bolts are 5 8 and the nuts are 11 16 Maybe that's normal, but it seems kind of weird to me. But what do I know? Let's snug them all up first of all. touching so we'll tighten them down. I don't have any torque specs so I'll go tell you know tight. Probably should use some Loctite huh. 
All right, now we got an upper, still all wrapped up in its plastic. And let's see, the instructions for the upper control arm simply say ball joint mounted to the bottom side of the control arm. The control arm is built to provide five degrees of caster. Do not remove the cross shaft bolts. Remove the original control arm, install the newer upper control arm assembly. The long tube will be towards the front of the car. So you can see one tube is longer, that goes to the front. Uh, and then have the car professionally lined. So, anyways. And like I said, they, they provided no hardware for this. But uh, I let me grab some new stuff yesterday. Lock washer and these are what five eighths, I believe. No, these are eleven sixteenths also. All right, I'm ready to install the uh, coilover kit, but as usual, uh, other commitments call. I got to run inside and cook some dinner. Uh, for Trey before he goes to practice and then uh, hopefully I'll come back out. We'll see All right, uh, well, I guess I did find some instructions Which is good because I don't really know what the hell I'm doing for the uh, coilover kit inside one of the shocks so <clears throat> I went and I was googling a couple things and I couldn't find the exact part number, but there was uh, instructions in that so uh, the first part's all about being safe and jacking your car up right. Obviously, I'm not dealing with all that because we're going on a bare frame, but then it tells you to pull the piston all the way up and screw the lock nut shoulder up and the spring nut shoulder up down to the last thread only. So this is the lock nut. It says shoulder up. There's a little, I guess that's this little bump right here. One side has it, one side don't. So we'll put that up. Do that down to the last thread it says. All right, and then you have, so that's the lock nut and the spring nut. So I'm guessing this is the spring nut. So I'm gonna screw that down. Go there, and then you're also supposed to put a little bit of anti-seize on this, so I don't have any handy, so I'll make sure I'll put some on uh, before I do any kind of adjustments with it. If the Viking thrust bearing kit is used, which this is, that's what this was in the box, put both washers with the anti-seize, install the spring seat washer, then the bearing, and then the second washer. So coat both washers with anti-seize. So I don't have any anti-seize. They're actually... I don't know, they're lubed up. The video I watched, the guy didn't put anything on them. This feels lubed too. So one washer, the bearing, and then another washer. And like I say, the instructions say they're coated with NSCs. They're obviously coated with some sort of oil already. Warranty is void and does not cover damage to the shock resulting from the failure to apply antices prior to making ride height adjustments. So, I guess you got to do that before you do any ride height adjustments. Install the spring onto the shock, putting the small end of the spring over the shock body and down onto the spring seat. Let's see, I haven't looked at the springs yet. CPP and a part number sticker that says redu reproductive harm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you'd want to try to reproduce with a spring. That could be harmful. Anyways. All right. Uh, so the spring onto the shock, putting the small end of the spring over the shock body and down onto the spring seat, which makes sense. You know, it wouldn't work very good to put the big end down there. 
this sticker goop off of there. And then it says for lower T-bar kits, which I'm assuming this is a lower T-bar kit because of the shape of that. Install the shock with the T-bar on top of the lower control arm with the adjustment knobs. Uh, so we got ride height, or not ride height, but uh, dampening adjustments here. So these knobs, it says, adjustment knobs facing out toward the spindle. The mounting area on top of the controller must be flat. It may be necessary, blah, 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 blah. The shocks include three eight bolts and nylock nuts. This hardware must be used. So they did supply some nuts and bolts. So we can use these. Uh, before tightening, ensure the shock is centered in the lower control arm. All right, so I guess we'll go to the control arm and take a peek. I think we may have to be careful about how this top of this goes up into the spring pocket as well. So uh, let's go back over to the front of the car and see if we can figure the rest of this out. All right, so just checking stuff out. The first thing I notice is the nuts they supplied, which it said, or the bolts they supplied, which it said must be utilized don't fit through the hole. So that's not a huge deal. They obviously fit through the hole on the shock. So we'll take the little uh, uni bit and make those just a hair bigger. I still got it laying here because I used it on the frame. Just have to go just a touch. I'm sure that was probably enough. So, get the metal shreds off of there. Well, bam, and oh, a little more on this guy. There we go. Felt like it went down to the next size. Boom. All right, so those go in. I'm gonna take the spring back off of the shock and just see how it goes up into spring pocket here and see if there's anything up there I need to worry about how it orientates in there yes it does matter or I assume it matters just like on the originals there's kind of a little pocket up there where it grabs so over there it's just kind of spinning but get to that spot so I need to mark Actually, I, look, there's a sticker on here right where it goes out. I'm not showing you very good, but that's pretty much, that needs to be facing me when that's up in there to make sure that the spring goes into the pocket, right? So we'll see if that helps us. Put that up in there. It'd be helpful if I can turn. I need. I'll try to turn those just a little bit. Just so it matches the angle I'm trying to put it on down here. Those guys started. At least I got one of them started. Working on the second one. There we go. And there's a little bit of adjustment in these, so I guess you probably just want it centered. Like we got equal distance on the little uh, reveal there to try to keep it centered. All right, I'm not gonna wrench them down yet, but I got them snugged up. All right, so now we have to try to get, make sure we get this seated in the top. Right there. All right, so we got these guys that came with the shock. I guess the big 
the hole is going to go up and down here because it has to get on that. So I can get that guy like that still. Put these on beforehand apparently. Barely get that started. It's gonna to want to be about there. Might have to try getting the floor jack over here and jacking up on that. Jack it up a little bit before it starts lifting up the whole world. There it started to lift the frame up. A little hole right here, and I can see the edge of the spring is right in this little pocket. So, this little bump right here is where the, the top coil goes and mounts or you know fits in there. And if you look in that hole, you guys may not be able to see it, but I can see the end, end of the spring is right there. So that's how we want it. So that's good. All right, so I tightened down this nut just a little bit because I just barely had a thread holding it through the lock nut on there. It's just hand tight just for now. Uh, it looks like I may have to adjust this bushing in here a little bit. It's not totally centered on the hole. And uh, the other thing is I'm assuming or guessing or thinking there maybe is supposed to be like a bump stop right here, a rubber I'll have to go look that up because I'm assuming you know, that's where the A arm hits. So I think there's supposed to be like a bump stop in there. I'll have to check that out. If there is, I don't think I have them. So I'll have to figure that out. I had like a month and a half or more since I ordered uh, all these front suspension parts to get everything ready. Uh, but one thing I spaced out is so here's obviously my old spindles and brake setups uh, here's the new one i need to get the steering knuckles or steering arms or whatever they're called off of those put on these so i'll have to get them ripped off there and obviously i'll want to kind of clean them up and try to paint them i'm going to guess these aren't going to want to come right loose maybe they will but i'm going to squirt some blaster on them Come loose. Oh, that one's loose. One on two ain't bad. Like it wants to come off of there. All right, I just had to get a little more violent with the old hammer. And we got that off of there. These have these don't have cotter keyholes, but they got like a locking nut, I guess. So I'm thinking that that I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's go back on there, and it is gonna fit. So that bad boy's got to go in there like that, but I'm going to paint it first. And then, like I said, they assemble all this stuff, but I got to get the caliper off of here, or the rotor off of there to put those in. So I got to take the caliper. So there's, I guess there's no real reason for it to be all assembled. I got to take it apart anyways, but. 
All right, so I'm still out here. It's pretty obvious. You know, obviously I'm gonna to take this stuff apart. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the car. It's gonna be easier to, you know, pull the rotor off and do all that stuff with it mounted rather than trying to fight with it. So um, I'm just gonna kind of throw her up there, maybe kind of temporarily for now. See where I'm at here. Let's see how all this stuff is gonna line up. Bottom one's in far enough to get a few threads on it. The top one, I was gonna do it first, but it didn't even go on enough to get some threads without banging it in, I guess. Oh. Apparently that's just a protective cap for shipping. I was like, well, would that go in there further? Now it goes through at least enough to get a thread on it, maybe. Gonna have to uh, hound her in there. A few little tap, tap, tap right in. I love tappers on that, and it's seated. Obviously, I will tighten those further. Uh, a little update, like I, I think I mentioned before, I couldn't the little shock. Bushings didn't seem like they were mounting or working very good. They have this uh, bigger side, this bigger shoulder, and a smaller one. Well, that's what it goes in, so I just assumed the bigger side, but the big side doesn't fit in there. Um, so the smaller side gives it a little bit of wiggle room, but at least it goes in the hole. So I guess the, again, no instructions, but I'm going to guess the... Uh, Smaller side goes to the frame because it just won't go in the other way. And then they're kind of offset and kind of weird. And uh, it does seem better. I'm losing my mind here. Where's that right here? So this is a little cap that goes on there. And it does seem like that side works better with the big shoulder against it. So we're going to do that. We're going to flip these over. So I had to take it back apart. I don't know what you guys are looking at. Enjoy the view of whatever you're looking at while I stick that back on here. Hopefully the right way this time. Well, I thought this was going to be just easy peasy. And it really is, I guess. It just doesn't make it any easier when you got to do it all twice. 